I'm Jasmine Anderson. We're learning more about what police found at the Massapequa Park home of accused Gilgo serial killer Rex Huerman. Police say the search, which is now in its 12th day, quote, has been fruitful. The digging is done. The area in the backyard that police excavated Sunday was graded over with dirt and excavating equipment has been removed from the backyard. Huerman is charged with killing three of the Gilgo four and is the prime suspect in the fourth killing. The Suffolk Police Commissioner was asked whether he thought Huerman was responsible for other killings. It's hard to say. Uh, once again, is this person has been at large for a long period of time. Um, but I, I will say this, we're going to, and you heard me say this before, we'll keep the task force together, we'll keep it intact, and uh, we'll uh, see if there's any other victims over on Ocean Parkway or anywhere else uh, throughout, uh, throughout Long Island. The commissioner says police could wrap up their search at the home as soon as today. Hurman is being held without bail and is due back in court next week. Newsday's team of journalists is working to bring you the latest on the Gilgo investigation. Read the breaking developments on Newsday.com. Click Get More below the Newsday TV video box. A wrongful death trial against Suffolk police is now underway. The federal death case involves 25-year-old Kenny Lazo, who died while in police custody in 2008. His family filed a multi-million dollar lawsuit alleging Suffolk County violated Lazo's civil rights. Lazo was beaten during a traffic stop when they suspected him of drug dealing. Police are investigating a deadly e-scooter crash in Smithtown. We're told 29-year-old Ryan Clancy of Kings Park lost control of his electric scooter last night on Route 25A. Police say he hit a curb, fell off, and hit his head on the pavement. Despite pushback, MTA moves ahead on Manhattan's congestion, congestion pricing. It's already begun installing new tolling equipment in Manhattan. Workers were spotted over the weekend installing cameras and sensors on 61st Street. Under the plan, vehicles will be charged up to $34.50 for driving below 60th Street in Manhattan. Women working on Long Island face the biggest wage gap in the state. Macy Eglund and Victor Ocasio have the story you'll see only in Newsday. Well, Long Island has the highest pay gap between men and women in the state. For women, the median wage is just 80 percent of what the men are making. Victor Ocasio has been working on this story for us. Why is it that we are seeing such a difference here on Long Island? Well, it's hard to say exactly. Experts have looked at this issue at the state level. It's hard to say exactly why Long Island has such a larger gap. But there are some theories. I've spoken to some economists and experts who point to the idea that uh, areas with higher medium incomes tend to have larger gender wage gaps. Um, and so we'll see that when areas with lower wages, the gaps tend to be smaller. So no real clear answer, but in your reporting, have you found anything that could maybe lead to this difference? Well, broadly speaking, there are a lot of factors that feed into the gender wage gap. Uh, probably the most significant of them is the motherhood penalty. The idea that as women enter their career, begin uh, w working their way up the ladder, they enter a point where they might step away to have a family and they can lose precious years and that can affect their long-term lifetime earnings. Are we seeing a significant difference in any fields in particular? While there's a wage gap pretty much in every occupational category, we see that in the legal field here on Long Island, there tends to be a huge gap between what female and uh, males in the field are making, with uh, women often seeing anywhere between less than 50% of their male counterparts. So it's an issue broadly. But some industries obviously seeing it uh, a little more drastically, I'd say, but definitely that disparity is pretty clear. Yes. Thank you, Victor. Read more about the wage gap on Newsday.com. Click Get More below the Newsday TV video box. A retired NYPD detective looking to unseat indicted Long Island Congressman George Santos. Later today, Republican Mike Sapriconi will announce his bid to take over Santos's seat in New York's third congressional district. The 67-year-old is the husband of a state Supreme Court judge in Nassau County. Now to beating the potentially dangerous heat. We could see a heat wave in parts of the island this week. Today, Hempstead Town is announcing its opening cooling centers and extending beach and pool hours. Many people will hit the beach this week to try and stay cool. Here's a look at Tiana Beach, Hampton Bays. Mostly sunny with a chance of thunderstorms later this afternoon. Looking at your day planner, 
Highs around 83 degrees. Tonight, we could see scattered thunderstorms with temps around 78 degrees. Now, tomorrow, we dry out. No rain in the forecast. Expect sunshine and mid 80s. Here's a look at your future cast. We could see some rain coming through this afternoon into this evening, depending on where you are on the island. A look at your seven day forecast coming up. Long Island weather is brought to you by King O'Rourke Automotive Group. News State Sports is brought to you by PC Richard and Son. Newsday Sports Now. Some of Long Island's high school gridiron greats just took part in a quarterback challenge. Krista Kelman has a story you'll see only in Newsday. You just love to do what you do. And, you know, there's nothing I'd rather do than be on the football field with my friends. The buzz around the upcoming high school football season grew louder at Kings Park High School during the second annual Long Island Quarterback Challenge. It was Syosset's Mustafa Mazawala who took home overall honors. It feels great to be out here with, with my teammates and, and just to have like the competition around you. It's kind of like a mini game day. You get to kind of see a little bit of that, that snapshot before the season starts and, and see who's been really working hard and improving and, and who's going to blossom during the season. Judged by former NFL quarterback Matt Sims, 16 selected QBs and their receivers competed in various skill tests and completed a written football IQ quiz. You're just trying to look at accuracy, footwork, um, following directions. A well-rounded approach to basically what you see on every Saturday and Sunday. The day provides Long Island's top quarterbacks with a unique opportunity to compete against each other and show off their skills before they hit the turf this season. Everyone could throw the ball here today. You know, there's some really good quarterbacks. So to have that knowledge of the game and to be able to apply it is what's almost more important than having that skill. I think the most important thing that we learned is that we went over, you know, leadership qualities and, and the intangibles that it really takes to be a quarterback. In Kings Park, Carissa Kelman, Newsday TV. Nice. Later today, we'll take a look at the girls quarterback challenge. Read more about the event on Newsday.com. Click get more below the Newsday TV video box. Helping strays, some Long Islanders are going out of their way to help feral cats. It's a story you'll see only in Newsday. The bus we purchased in Florida and had it driven up here in 2017 and have been performing spay neuter surgeries for feral cats, kittens and pets. I feel like we make a difference at each site that we go to but there are so many people that don't know that there are municipalities that offer free programs for them. Uh, there are so many people that don't really know what to do when they find a litter in their backyard. And I think education is key here. I think the more that we educate the public, the better off we will be. I usually go trapping early in the morning, uh, come back in the afternoon and uh, clean, feed the ferals, uh, take care of kittens on fostering, and then Usually I go to my adoption center and I make sure everything's running okay there, then come back before bed and clean the ferals again and then wake up to another adventure. <laughs> my parents had an ice cream store out in Shirley and there were feral cats back there. So I was out there with them, feeding them, petting them, brushing them, whatnot. Um, and it just kind of continued. We have two eight by 12 sheds. Um, they're insulated finished on the inside. They have lighting. Um, in the winter, we have the heat for them, so they stay nice and toasty. Um, and then outside, we have a 16 by 24 enclosure, and then they could go in and out through the cat doors from the buildings to the enclosure. It's very expensive, obviously. The food, the litter, the medical is a big one. Um, so I used to pay everything out of pocket. Now we're trying to mainly raise donations to support it, because obviously we can't grow if I'm still paying for everything so we're just trying to raise the funds to be able to support these guys and all their needs so we can kind of expand and help you know help more come on oh the cats need a little tlc to read more about the feral cat rescue workers on newsday.com click get more below the newsday tv video box 
Watch Newsday TV on the big screen. Use the remote to activate Siri, Alexa, Roku, or the Google Assistant on your streaming device. Say, install Newsday. Newsday TV, covering Long Island like no one else can. I'm Jasmine Anderson. Thanks for watching. We'll leave you with a look at your hyperlocal seven-day forecast.